Oh, well, there's many in the council chamber, is there? Oh, here they are. You want me to start? Before we start, could we ask the people who are online to just mute, please? You'll be called because otherwise we have a lot of echo feeding in the moment. Oh, you have, have you? Okay, right. Right, members and officers, please raise your hand to indicate that you should speak. Please keep your microphone on mute when you are speaking, when you're not speaking. Please, can I ask also ask that any questions are kept brief and to the point? There'll be timing your speeches this evening and an alarm will sound when you've been speaking for four minutes. First of all, apologies for absence and substitutes. Kimberly. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we have apologies from Councillor Hunt, Councillor Wicks, and Councillor Blishin. Um, so far, we have Councillor Davidson as substitute. Thank you. And I believe Councillor Dixon may be late. Yes. Sorry, yeah. Chairman. Yes, and Councillor Dixon may be a little late. Minutes of the last meeting. Could I ask you to prove the minutes of the last meeting, which was held on the 17th of August and published on the council's website as being correct? Is that correct? Thank you. Declarations of interest, uh, Kimball. Anybody? No declaration submitted prior to the meeting, Chairman. You submit anything now? No. Right. Public. None received, Chairman. And questions from members. None received, Chairman. Any relevant updates to government guidance or legislation since the last meeting? I think Chair, through no updates. Right. That brings us on to the main items on the agenda. And first of all, I'd like to say that we're going to take the um, the the substantive application for 44 Beavers Road first, which is 88, which is WA 2022 first, 0706, and this is building consent afterwards. So that seems more logical to me. Anyway, the, um, this is for the erection of extensions and alterations and the erection of a detached garage following demolition of the existing garage, and it's Sam Wallace to present. Sam. Thank you, Chairman, and good evening, members. Uh, the application under consideration at committee is WA 2022-00706 at 44 Beavers Road, um, the application is for the erection of extensions and alterations and the erection of the detached garage following the demolition of the existing garage. Um, an update sheet has been provided to members. Um, within this, there are a minor amendment to the report. Um, page 21 of the agenda report, page six of the officer's report um, stated um, regarding the garage. The addition would represent a uh, would represent no increase in built footprint. It should have said the addition would represent a minor increase in built footprint on existing. 
uh, we also received uh, three additional neighbour representations from previous respondents um, highlighting the following concerns. Uh, they did uh, largely raise issues already covered in the report, but I'll go through them, um, the question and what the, we responded. Um, with reference to point 11, why has Waverley Planning Report on the above application WA 2022-00706 made no mention that the proposed new garage is far larger than the existing one, as can be seen from the submitted drawings? Um, it is noted the existing garage of number 44 is shown on plans and was evidenced on the officer's site visit along with neighbours garaging. Um, as highlighted within both part 10 and part 11 of the report, the proposed garage would be sat largely on existing built footprint and the pitched roof height be similar to an existing rear outlier. Thus officers raised no concern with this proposal and no material impact on residential amenity would occur. Um, a respondent disagreed with the following statement that the extensions will be rendered, which will give a light appearance that will properly distinguish it from the historic core. Um, in response, the points regarding acceptability of the design and materials were highlighted within both paragraph nine and 10 and were deemed acceptable by the council's historic buildings officer. Uh, whilst the use of contemporary materials does differ from the main house, officers consider on balance that a contrast in materials would not detract from number 44 and the surrounding setting. Another question, why has the Waverley Planning Report not addressed the objection regarding uh, potential risk of structural damage to adjoining properties? Um, it's noted the issue of foundations is not a planning matter and rather is identified within building approval. Um, why has the Waverley Planning Report not addressed the concerns about lack of space in Beavers Close for construction traffic um, and about safety? Um, the proposal is for a minor householder extension. The impact of construction traffic and safety of passers-by using the footpath would be negligible for a property of this scale. Um, enacting any condition on construction hours or safety would be unreasonable in line with paragraph 55 of the MPPF. Um, and lastly, when have or when the, will the uh, Waverley carry out a site visit to Beavers Close to assess the safety concerns um, and ability to, of residents to gain access to and from their properties? Uh, the proposal would have no impact or alteration to existing access, would not inhibit local residents gaining access to or from their properties. Um, construction traffic would be minor as the proposal is a householder application. It's noted the officer has been to site three times uh, to place the site notice to view the dwelling and again to assess the views from Beavers Close. Um, so I'll go back to the main port. Um, So as you can see from the aerial view, the application site is located to the north of Beavers Road, close to the junction uh, with uh, Crondall Lane in the developed area of Farnham, with rear access and a garage along Beavers Close. Um, the aerial photo uh, is noted there is a public footpath that runs adjacent to the grade uh, two listed building connecting Beavers Close and Beavers Road. The aerial photo also shows that the row of grade two listed terrace dwellings has a mix of surrounding built form. You have uh, the three-story flats to the south, uh, bunga, bungalow dwellings to the north, all in different styles. Um, photo A shows the front of the dwelling along uh, Beavers Road as part of a terrace of uh, grade two listed dwellings. Uh, photo B shows the view accessing Beavers close from Crondall Lane to the rear of the property. Uh, this is shown in the distance on the right of the picture, uh, with more recent bungalow properties and four flats on the left. Um, photo C shows the rear of the property with brick walls and garaging. Um, as shown, the garaging is poor in form and owing to the height of the brick wall, the rear of the dwellings are seen as a backdrop to views when using the footpath, which you can see on the left. Um, it is noted the brick walls are not listed structures. Um, photo D shows the rear elevation. Uh, it is noted there have been numerous uh, 20th century alterations um, with uh, scarred brickwork and blocked out windows present. Finally, photo E and photo F um, show the neighbouring property number 42 with a two storey rear extension um, as evidenced by the flat roof. This is a more modern addition to the original um, terraced grade two listed dwellings. Uh, this is the proposed site plan of the development. Um, it shows the plot with the proposed 
replacement detached single garage with the aluminium roof to the rear, the part two story, part single story rear extension. These are the uh, existing elevations. Uh, you can see the, uh, see the garage at the bottom there um, is similar in form to the neighbors at 46. Um, so the full application constitutes the erection of a part two story, part single story rear extension in smooth render and erection of a detached garage with pitched roof uh, following demolition of the existing garage. Um, the main matters for consideration are the uh, impact on heritage assets, namely the grade two listed buildings. As detailed in the section on impact to listed building, uh, 44 Beavers Road is one of eight grade two listed terrace dwellings, originally of 18th and 19th century construction. Uh, they were previously used as hop kilns. Uh, the council's heritage officer stated that the scale of the terrace is impressive. However, the rear elevation has been much altered and is architecturally poor with scarred brickwork and blocked windows. As a result, the officer signified less than substantial harm. Uh, this harm is considered to be very limited and could be moderated by a recording exercise. Um, under paragraph 202 of the MPPF, this harm should be weighed um, against public be benefit, including importantly securing the optimum viable use of the site. Although it is recognised, any harm must be given considerable importance um, and weight. Um, in this circumstances, officers consider the benefits comprise an improved standard of accommodation, uh, commensurate with modern standards of living. Officers consider that the public benefit is sufficient to outweigh the very limited, less than substantial harm that would result. Um, the impact on design, visual amenity, and setting of the town centre CA, as detailed in the section mm -hmm. on design, um, as, set, as detailed in this section, the proposal would sit on both sides. Um, I'll go back to the photo. Um, and after amendments has reduced the eaves height to allow the continuity of the main roof to appear legible. It is noted that the neighbouring property number 42 has had at some point in the 20th century a two storey rear extension. Uh, design would use more contemporary materials away from the clay brickwork of the main house, the smooth render and aluminium roof. As it sat in on both sides, existing brickwork remains legible and provides for an appropriate contrast between old and new parts of the building. It is reiterated that such materials will be subject to a heritage condition. Um, the post will be located over 200 metres from the town centre CA um, and thus would not be uh, visible from any point, any viewpoints. Um, furthermore, it's considered the proposed garage would represent an uplift on existing with materials that tie, would tie in with the proposed extension. Um, regarding residential amenity, development would not impact the 45 degree rule, would comply with residential SPD guidance in regards to overlooking, locate an acceptable distance from the bungalow to the rear and would have oblique views into neighbouring amenity space. Um, lastly, regarding parking, whilst the proposal would be below the council's parking guidelines, the site is located on the periphery of the town centre area in a highly sustainable location with access to amenities readily available on foot. Um, for these reasons, within the immediate locality, the proposal would be acceptable. Um, as such, officers are recommending approval for this planning application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Sam. Right, we have two public speakers on this item, both of them are online. And the first public speaker is Richard Burke. Gee, I don't know if I'll your surname properly. Uh, you have four minutes, Richard, from when you start speaking and an alarm will sound. Thank you very much. You haven't unmuted, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. OK. It is almost impossible to see the justification for grant status, not because of what's been said, but rather not said. To recap, the main intention here is to bolt a modern two-storey extension onto the rear of a 270-year-old clay-tiled red brick grade two listed dwelling, which sits in the middle of a row of seven similar properties. And to do so using modern materials which are wholly out of keeping with the immediate surrounds to include a grey aluminium roof, grey aluminium doors and windows finished off with rendered walls. 
Frustratingly, too often we found the case officers' reports misleading and in contradiction of the architect's outputs. For example, regarding the external rear wall, the case officer says, quote, will be partly breached to link with the extension, unquote, but doesn't say by how much. The architect's drawings suggest a significant part of both the ground and first floor external wall to be removed, including all existing windows and doors. We believe that to be at least three quarters of the whole rear elevation. And again with the garage, the case officers now saying minor increase in built footprint, unquote. Yet the architect's drawing shows something far larger than that in a much bigger footprint, including an unnecessarily high apex roof that will dwarf the garage and roof next to it, and would actually be higher than the existing outlier between 44 and 46. And again, importantly, the case officer's document refers several times to the extension at number 42, worded in such a way that could have the reader readily believe that the very existence of the extension at 42 gives some kind of justification and credibility to this current application. It does not. The one at 42 was built totally in keeping with the terrace row around 1920 and had been in place for around 50 years before the listed status was awarded in 1972. The extension proposed today would be the complete opposite, wholly out of keeping in both design and materials. Risk. The removal of the majority of the rear wall elevation, including all windows and doors, creates a huge risk to the integrity of the adjoining buildings at 42 and 46. Why? Because the whole row of dwellings from 36 to 50 have no foundations beneath the structure, only shallow footings across the whole row. The whole structure moves in line with the water table and has been doing so for over 270 years. There is no mention of this in any architect or case officer outputs. The second big risk is solid deep foundations would be required to support the new extension due to clay soil. This means the new structure built on new solid deep foundations will be tightly connected to a structure that has no foundations and does move. This was raised by objectors, but again has not been answered nor addressed by any case officer documents. The proposed materials will look wholly out of keeping. It would do nothing but harm to the character and balance of this whole terrace, which can be seen by the public from Beavers Close. In conclusion, if granted, you will be setting a precedent that will be affecting listed properties forevermore in the Farnham area. Proposed structural changes introduce significant risks threatening the integrity of multiple dwellings. The case officer makes minimal reference to the loss of light and privacy, citing the 45 degree rule as the total answer. I would refer you to the Farnham Society CGI drawings for a far more comprehensive and pertinent view. Finally, it's for these reasons and more that we believe this application to be certainly disharmonious, structurally high risk and wholly detrimental to this listed terrace row. And I urge you to refuse this application accordingly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can I have the other public speaker first, which is Neil Hallam Jones, who is also online. Neil, you've got four minutes too, thank you. Good evening, councillors. In September 2021, we received pre-application advice from your authority. The subsequent applications that are before you now were pre-dedicated pre entirely upon advice. Indeed, the application proposals were originally almost identical to those on the pre-application stage. Your advice took into account all the adopted planning policies and supplementary guidance together with the statutory considerations required by the National Planning Policy Framework. The application seeks to extend 44 Beavers Road to two rear stories. It also seeks permission to construct a new detached garage and minimum size standards that you require in order to replace a Marley type garage that is no longer fit for purpose. The design of the extension that appears to cause so much perceived anguish to local residents and some not so local, is contemporary and uses modern materials. This is generally accepted way to add to a listed building in that it clearly distinguishes the new from the original. This is an approach much encouraged by English heritage 
to ensure that the resulting whole is not simply a pastiche of inappropriate form and materials in intended so slavishly or heavy-handedly to replicate the original. The two-story extension to the neighboring property number 42 being a prime example. This approach was encouraged by your conservation officer at pre-application stage, who noted that the extension subject to good detailing would be appropriate to the setting, and who also noted that the proposals would result in less than substantial harm to the heritage asset, and that the extension proposed is of appropriate bulk and mass that would not be inappropriate in the context of the host dwelling and wider site. Matters of overlooking of their, and therefore loss of privacy. The proposal would in fact overlook adjacent gardens less than the existing windows do. The loss of light would not be caused by virtue of separation distances. The loss of some of the original rear elevation, an elevation that according to your conservation officer is pleasant, but without great aesthetic quality and which will be largely retained unseen behind the extension is not a material loss. The rear elevation offers no clues to the history of the hop kilns and what building attachments previously existed. In, collabor in collaboration with your officers, we amended the design. It now seems little success in the genuine attempt to ad address some of the objections, many of which, which were not in my backyard type. There are of course those whom no extension would be acceptable. Those, for example, who may already have extended their own properties. In matters of design, taste is not a material consideration. It would be quite wrong, for example, for you to refuse this application solely because you believe that your taste is superior to mine. I have made this application because the pre-application advice from your officers sought formally and paid for was entirely positive. I would not have done so otherwise. The proposals are supported by your planning and conservation officers. There are no objections from any statutory consultees and the application is recommended for approval. It is such a shame that all through this process, I have thought, sought and acted upon advice from your professional officers and have engaged with your authority to secure proposals that could be supported and are supported. And yet here we are having a debate about the merits or otherwise of proposals which no historic knowledge appears to be prerequisite. You are, of course, quite entitled to disagree with your officers and okay. refuse this application. Okay. Only ask now that you consider whether such a refusal will be sustainable on appeal or whether it would be resilient to an application for costs. Thank you. The application is nevertheless commended to you. Yeah, Thank you've you. had your four minutes, Neil. Uh, right, okay. Do the officers want to come back just before I open? Um, thank you, Chair. Just one really brief, uh, brief point that, um, yeah, just to reiterate, there's a team approach to producing, uh, producing officers reports and um, any report that's on the agenda is, you know, is, is reviewed with, um, you know, as part of a part of a team. Um, the, um, I, I know there were some comments about um, an intention to mislead, there clearly isn't an intention to mislead within those reports. Um, the, you have all the information you require so like the the drawings and like show the detail of the of the application um, and the officer's report is intended to put forward our um, our recommendation as we always always do so thank you chair yeah. right debate any kind of on the debate councillor hess and then councillor deer <clears throat> thank you chair um i called this in because there's been considerable concern by neighbours in the vicinity, um, which has come to my attention. Um, it was discussed at um, Farnham's uh, Planning and Licensing Consultative Group, um, and the view of that group was that there's a strong objection to the inappropriate development to the rear of the Grade 2 listed mid-terrace property. property. The materials and design are unacceptable, non-compliant with the Farnham design statement, Farnham Neighbourhood Plan Policy FNP1, New Development and Conservation, FNP2, Farnham Town Centre Conservation Area and its setting, FM, FMP16 Extensions, Residential Extensions SPD and LPP1 Policy 
TD1 Townscape and Design. So there is um, quite a, a lot of concern about the inappropriate um, modern design using very modern materials um, and not being compatible with the um, listed red brick clay tile terrace. Um, there's concern that the garage is somewhat out of proportion to other buildings um, at the rear. Um, and the parking provision falls below the council's own car parking guidelines, which officers seem to be happy to overrule. Um, so I bring all of that to my colleagues' attention um, that we should consider refusing this application on, on, on the basis of what I've said. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Dear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, I've been a charter surveyor for 30 something, 35 years. I own a listed building, uh, a commercial building, not a residential building, but a, I do own a listed building. And I don't really regard myself with that great professional background of professional experience as capable of judging um, the technicalities of this, which is why I've been rely, which is why I rely on the report of our officers. Um, they seem to have done a comprehensive analysis of the, 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 the benefits and the, and the disadvantages of this scheme. Um, but insofar as I am unqualified, the points that occur to me seem to be that it is this is, is uh, a subordinate um, extension. It is subordinate to the main property. In my view, uh, the design is attractive. It's different. Um, but then everyone's view of taste and design is different. But in the opinion of our own planning officers is acceptable. It seems to be a high quality uh, idea. Uh, the structure aspect is not relevant as far as we're concerned, as you'll be aware, that's something for building regs to sort out. Um, there's the evidence of next door uh, and the extension they've already carried out, which is a material planning consideration um, from our point of view. And taking all that on board with the background of the experience and the specialist nature of the um, advice and uh, information that our officers have, I, I see no problem with supporting this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Keane. Councillor James. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I concur with um, my uh, friend on my right. Um, what it, it is due to taste and design, which is what um, the objectors are concerned with. Um, and it's the timing of it. I, I do live in a listed building. It's 16th century. And it has a Victorian extension at the back, which is a far greater distance between timing than this one to the original building. Um, and if we're going to keep saying just because it's modern now, that's what I find difficult. It's a Victorian one was modern compared to one that was built in 1500. Um, so I go along with the officers and you have to take what is due now and an extension now is different to extensions previously. And I think it is very subservient to the original building um, and it's much better actually than the two story ones next door. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> when, I, when I looked at this and heard the officer's report, um, I couldn't make up my mind which way to go. I listened intently to Councillor Hess, who is bringing a local feeling. And of course, I also listened to Councillor Deer, who was saying that it's acceptable. Coming from Hazemere, I, I do know that when we see this sort of building there, we would like to actually look at it in, in a form that was compatible with the surrounding houses. And Councillor Deer has said that on many occasions. Now, my, my problem here is that this does stand out. The materials that are used do not um, in any way um, go with the building it's joining to. And yet, if you look at the opposite, then the rear of that building is totally unattractive. And of course, it, it looks to me run down. So you could almost say that any extension on that rear side could be seen to improve those buildings. 
So I am still caught between the two ways of thinking about it. Um, I would like to have had better materials, um, but I see no problem with putting extension on. I'll leave it there at the moment and perhaps hear views from others. Any other councillor wishes to speak on this one? Ah, yes, councillor Martin. I also live in a listed building going back to the 12th century. However, I wouldn't think of putting two metal boxes on the back of it. So I'm sorry, I won't be voting for this. Thank you. Any other council wishes to speak? Oh. Right then, we have to move to the recommendation. And the recommendation is that subject to conditions one to four, permission be granted. Those in favour of the recommendation, could you please raise your hands, please? Those against, and abstain, uh, abstain. You abstain, Councillor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you only had one vote, can Thank you, Chairman. So that's five in favour, four against, and one abstention. So therefore, the cat is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, right, I, I presume the next, the, the next application is related to this is illicit billing consent for internal and external alterations. That's true. Is that, is that academic? The officers will just put a side up. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, same same address. It was just for the listed building consent. Uh, it's just noted one verbal update to the application that um, it should be uh, on page nine, the agenda pack. It should be section 66, not section 16 of the Planning uh, Planning Act 1990. Um, the proposal is the same as 00706, but only relates to the extensions and alterations to the main house, not the garaging, um, as this is not uh, listed. I'll just put that back on the screen. Um, the main consideration is the impact on uh, 94 Beavers Road, a grade two listed heritage asset. The assessment is identical to the previously discussed application and officers are recommending granting of listed building consent. Uh, now we give you a minute, but does anybody wish to speak on this application at all? Then we move straight to the sports and sports. And the, the recommendation that subject to conditions one to five consent be granted. For those in favor, please raise their hands. Thank you, Chairman. That's six in favour, three against, and one abstention. Therefore, it's carried. Thank you very much. Right, please. The next application is WA 2022-03223, the land at Cliff 14 Great Austin's Farnham, GU 98JG, the erection of a two-storey extension, single four-storey extensions, new outbuilding and widening of the driveway by one metre following the demolition of the existing garage amended by plans received on the 6th of May. And Dan to present. Dan, your turn. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, members. The application has been brought before the planning committee at the request of Ward Councillor Carol Coburn, who would like further consideration to be given to the bulk and design of the rear extension in relation to the setting of Great Austin's conservation area and the impact on character. The ward member would also like further consideration to be given to the land levels and the size of the home office proposed in the conservation area. The application site lies within Great Austin's conservation area and within South Farnham Arcadian areas. The proposed development is described within the description of the officer's report on page 28 of the, of the agenda and includes the erection of a two-storey extension on the side elevation with dormer to match existing front dormer, erection of a first floor extension on the rear elevation to replace the existing cat slide roof, 
the insertion of a rear gable dormer with recessed terrace, the insertion of a rear dormer on the side extension to match the existing front dormer, the erection of a single storey extension with roof terrace on the rear elevation, the erection of an oak framed porch with brick plinth on the side elevation, the erection of a new outbuilding following demolition of the existing garage and the widening of the driveway by one metre. Officers consider that the proposal is acceptable with regards to the impact on the conservation area, character, visual, residential amenity, parking, access and biodiversity. This slide shows the location plan. The plan shows the existing dwelling and detached outbuilding fronting Great Austins and shows surrounding dwellings to be large detached buildings set in substantial grounds within a residential area. Access to the site is to the um, southeast of the site and the site is also bound to the west by Trebor Avenue. This shows the aerial view of the site and shows the extent of the existing dwelling, neighbouring built form and the relationship of the application site to neighbouring properties. These are some photos. Um, and this photo shows the front elevation of the main dwelling looking towards the northwest from inside the existing front garden. A photo B shows the rear elevation. Uh, looking southeast from the rear garden to the existing dwelling. Um, it also demonstrates the change in levels where the land slopes down towards the rear. Photo C um, looks northwest towards the front elevation of the existing outbuilding uh, and store, which is which are proposed to be demolished. Photograph D looks um, southeast, um, showing the rear elevation of the dwelling and existing outbuilding in store. And photo E looks northwest uh, and shows the existing dwelling from Trebor Avenue. So this is the proposed block plan and it shows, um, highlights the proposed additions and new outbuilding hatched in grey. Um, the proposed materials are facing brickwork and white render with tiles to match existing would be appropriate. These are the existing elevations of the, that's the main dwelling and the outbuilding. And then the proposed front and rear. So the top one is the front um, and you can see the addition of the two storey side extension and, um, and the dormer um, would present uh, it would result in a new dwelling that would not appear um, vis visually disproportionate. Um, and then the rear elevation, you can make out with the outbuilding on the left, the, the stepped level um, to accommodate the change in, in um, levels. It is single storey. Okay, the side elevations, um, and these drawings show that the roof terrace will be bound by the first floor roof extension to the southeast with, a, with an obscure glazed glass screen that would be um, approximately 1.7 metres in height. Um, and this would restrict any views into neighbouring properties and retain the privacy of the neighbours where concern had previously been raised. This is the roof plan with the main dwelling and the, and the outbuilding. And then these are the um, elevations and section plan of the proposed outbuilding. Um, so you can see that where it would where it would step down. And these are the plans and roof plan of the outbuilding. So the main matters of consideration um, for consideration by members are. The impact on the Great Austin's conservation area. Less than substantial harm has been identified on a limited scale. The scale of the house would increase significantly. However, almost any substantial enlargement of dwellings within the conservation area do risk some harm. And officers note the problem of the harm versus no harm definition. And if any historic fabric is altered or removed, it's not possible to claim there to be no harm. In fact, that harm might border on being trivial, as in this case. 
as has been um, identified by the, the um, historic buildings officer. The public benefits are in the improved comfort and amenity of the users of the dwelling, ensuring the dwelling remains an attractive place to live. Whilst this public benefit would be limited, it is the view of officers and the council's historic buildings officer that even when giving great weight to the harm identified in accordance with paragraphs 199 and 200 of the NPPF, the harm would be very limited. And on balance, officers consider the public benefit to outweigh the limited harm identified. In terms of character and design and impact on visual amenity, despite the additional bulk and mass, officers are satisfied that the resultant dwelling would not appear visually disproportionate and no harm to the character of the area would result. In terms of the outbuilding, the steps form would align with the sloping topography, offsetting the additional scale and bulk of the building. And officers consider that the proposed new outbuilding would result in no harmful visual impact and would be acceptable. In terms of residential amenity, no harmful overbearing development or loss of light would result owing to the separation distances. Conditions requiring the obscure glazing of first floor windows on the southwest elevation have been imposed to re retain neighbours' privacy, um, as has the privacy screen, which is also conditioned. As such, um, officers consider the outbuilding would not be overbearing, would not result in any loss of light or result in any harmful loss of privacy or outlook to neighbouring properties and would be acceptable. In terms of biodiversity, a uh, preliminary roost assessment and re-emergent survey has been submitted and reviewed by Surrey Wildlife Trust, who, are, who have commented that the application is acceptable subject to compliance with mitigation conditions. Um, and finally, highways, parking and access, um, they have assessed the proposed widening of the application of, of the access um, on safety, capacity and policy grounds and are satisfied that the alterations would have no harmful impact on the highway. For the reasons outlined within this presentation and within the report, the proposed development would be acceptable. Um, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Mm, thank you very much, Dan. We have two public speakers on this item. The first being an Anthony, I hope we get this surname right, Sakalaru. Uh, is he online or is he with? Yes, I'm online. Hello, I say. Oh, he's online. Hello, Anthony. Hello. Uh, you've got uh, four minutes to make your case, please. Uh, thank you. Um, we know that the uh, planning uh, officers are minded to approve the application as it stands. And we also note that the applicants' agents have made some alterations to the original plans following some of the objections raised. However, we don't feel that the proposed plans adequately address our original concerns, especially in relation to the uh, second floor rear extension and the proposed new outbuilding. In terms of the rear extension and its impact on heritage assets, even the officers agree that the extension to the rear are startling and that the appearance will be significantly changed. Uh, but that this appearance uh, or elevation will not be prominent in views from within the conservation area. That may be true, but what is the purpose of a conservation area if the overall appearance of the buildings in the area is gradually changed and eroded so as to end up more in keeping with houses the size of those on Compton Way or Monk's Well? I would argue that this is not in accordance with FNP1 uh, in making a positive contribution to local character and distinctiveness. Uh, which it clearly is not, nor FNP 16 in terms of the fact that it is of inappropriate size and scale. Um, in terms of its impact on number 12's residential amenity, the rear extensions, that second floor balcony and roof terrace uh, may not, after recessing, allow access overlooking of the uh, main amenity space of number 12, but it would still result in loss of privacy in a of a large part of the rear garden of uh, number 12. Moving on to the outbuilding, the officers state that in their um, view, that the proposed, even in their view, uh, the proposed outbuilding is of substantial size. Um, the officers state that much of the increase would be offset by the split level nature of the new building and the sloping topography, and that the site could comfortably accommodate this outbuilding uh, um, of this size without appearing cramped, contrived or, or overdeveloped. Again, I would argue against this view on two counts. Firstly, uh, the, great, the Great Austin's uh, conservation area plots are not of the size of those on Compton Way or Monk's Well, and therefore 
this particular outbuilding would definitely appear contrived and give the appearance of unnecessary overdevelopment. Uh, secondly, the proposed um, two level outbuilding is 12 meters long. 12, that is the length of some houses. Further, in its current form, even with the recent alteration of plans, it will result in overshadowing of, number, of the patio of number 12 and loss of light, especially in the winter months when the hornbeams along that border would lose all their leaves. Further, the proposed 12 meter length is longer than the eight meter length of the hornbeams on that border, meaning it would extend four meters beyond the hornbeams. And therefore, in spite of the sloping topography, would still overshadow uh, the patio of number 12 and that, and that amenity. Uh, it would cause further loss of light. Also, because of the proposed outbuildings proximity to the boundary of number 12, the foundations of such a large outbuilding would need that, that would need to be laid for this very uh, large structure would result in almost certain damage to the root structure uh, and ultimate death of the hornbeams along that border and most likely of the rowan tree in that property too. This would be contrary to the uh, principles of FNP5, which is the preservation of existing trees and hedges to retain the character of the area. So in, in conclusion, we don't have an objection to the improvement and reasonable development of number 14. Clearly it needs it. It is the scale that it is that is alarming and the effect it will have in terms of overshadowing, loss of privacy, overlooking, as well as the secondary... Right. Can you sum up, please? Uh, the next is uh, Gideon Reeves, who I believe is here. You, Gideon? Thank you, Chairman and members. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Gideon Reeves. I am the resident of 14 Great Austins. I'm the applicant for this project. I've spent the majority of my life living near to Farnham, visiting my friends who live here, shopping, eating and drinking here. We could not imagine a better place as our home moving here four years ago. So on submitting these plans, we were very aware of the historical significance of this neighbourhood and its importance as a garden suburb and heritage conservation area this being a key driver and reason for our ambition to buy this house as our forever home. Thus, we have not underestimated the privilege to live here and the responsibility as residents to be ambassadors for the preser preservation and enhancement of the neighborhood. For this reason, we're truly grateful to the planning team, the historical buildings officer, the Great Austin's preservation group, and our local councillor for comprehensively guiding us through this process and helping us navigate the complexity of the multiple national government acts, local borough plans, town planning policies, and conservation constraints. Constraints. This has helped us refine our plans with amendments, adhering to the guidelines with the ambition to exceed uh, the planning expectations while sympathetically responding to any of the local community's concerns. We have sought to not only preserve the character of the area, but hope to be proactively enhancing the neighborhood, ensuring there is no adverse effect upon the setting, the adjoining residential properties and character appearance of the area. Considering the comments and recommendations that were registered in the planning portal and submitting amends accordingly, I wanted to highlight the following. Firstly, the main co commendations to celebrate. Uh, by keeping the front elevation along the existing roof line of the main residence rather than making it subservient would not appear as incongruous, but presents a symmetrical called dwelling that does not appear visually disproportionate. The removal of the lean to conservatory with oak canopy, canopy replacement improves the tree bore avenue vista. The amended ground floor extension to the rear now demonstrates elegant design details. The reduced single story split level outbuilding is comfortably accommodated on the site without appearing cramped, contrived or overdeveloped. Secondly, many of the objections have been appreciated responded to and reflected in the amended plan submitted on the 6th of May, 2022, and have received the support from the planning officer. The size and bulk of the outbuilding has now been submitted as a single story split level ancillary amenity, reducing concerns about the bulk, any effect on the neighboring property and its use. 
the plans actually outline a dramatically scaled down option, almost in line with permitted development restrictions. And we have additionally included condition three outlining it as an ancillary to the existing use of the property. The gable roof extension on the tree bore Avenue Vista was changed to a hip roof on recommendation of the Great Austin's Preservation Group. Improving this vista, but also limiting the visual impact of the other extensions to the rear as they sit behind this commended feature. Finally, a number of the objections have unfortunately misunderstood the plans, and it would be a shame if these distracted the committee from focusing on the valid objections and responses in our amends. And, and these are to confirm, we are replacing all the current UPVC windows that affect the conservation area, visual immunity with timber, so making the property more in keeping with the heritage asset. The confusion about which flank of the building has six windows, it is the one on Treble Avenue, not the one next to 12, it lays the majority of objections in regards to overlooking or privacy. Uh, and the rear extension and outbuilding will actually have limited impact on the character and visual amenity of the conservation area as a heritage asset uh, and, and for the neighbours as it's fully compliant within the multiple protection policies in place. So to finally say, you know, we feel like we're importantly remaining fiercely protective of our neighbourhood, the Great Observations Conservation Area, not only to preserve it, but enhance it for future generations to enjoy. Right. Thank you very much, Gideon. Right, councillors, your turn. And Councillor Coburn. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, seems a long time ago since I called this, this one in. Um, but I did my usual walk round yesterday um, down Treebore Avenue. Somehow I had deja vu. I, I, I can't remember why I was down there last time, because when I looked at the history and constraints, there was nothing that was relevant to anything I saw. But anyway, I, I did revisit the site to make sure that what I had called the, uh, the plan in for, uh, the application in for, was still in place. Um, we have just done a, a, an appraisal of the Great Austin's conservation area and written a management plan. You know, it's a very important, it doesn't get a mention in the officer's report, presumably it was just timing. Um, but, you know, there is a, a new management plan. It was May, I think it was ratified. And Great Austin's is exceptional in so many ways. It's so different from the rest of the Bourne. The Bourne is mainly little wiggly roads without any pavements and lighting. Um, and Great Austin's was set out specifically on this almost grid system. Um, and when we say Great Austin's, we don't just mean the road of Great Austin's, we mean uh, Mavins, Middle Avenue, uh, Green Hill at the top and Little Austin's Road. The, the, the whole of that is the Great Austin's uh, preservation or conservation area. So we are so determined to keep this looking as much, uh, we're not against people changing their houses, let's just make that clear at the beginning, but we are still trying while allowing people to improve their properties to maintain the, the essence, if you like, of what makes the Great Austin's um, uh, area so special. And it is special. I mean, you, you just have to drive around it and you see it. Um, the, uh, one of the speakers mentioned the fact that it's not grand. We don't do grand in the Bourne. We do quite large um, and we do have large gardens, but we don't really, do grand you know we we're, we're very subtle with our entrances we don't sort of announce that we live here or whatever um and i do have still doubts about the size of this extension when we re redrew the boundary or revised the boundary for the the area appraisal we very carefully went round the back gardens of uh, these houses on the the north side of great austins and so basically the conservation area does go into, if you think about it, Trebor Avenue. And Trebor Avenue is a track. It's not a road as such. I mean, you can now drive down it, but uh, at one time, uh, it, you know, you couldn't do that, but you can drive down it now, and <laughs> you have done for many years, but it is a track. It's not a, a, a made road. Um, so this house is very visible from certainly two sides, and then obviously if you live nearer uh, from a, another side so it does tend to stand out when I came when you walk it's quite a steep hill down Trebor Avenue when you come back up you know the house is very very visible so anything you do on this house is going to be visible there's, there's just nothing you can do about it um, I have no objections to part of this at all um, some of it I think does improve the the property and I'm, I'm delighted to hear about the boundary windows 
I am worried, very worried about an, um, a rear story extension that was described as startling. Um, I know startling could be good, but I really do think looking at this and looking at the house yesterday, I cannot see how this type of material with this house actually does preserve the um, integrity of this house. I really can't. Um, I have real problems with it because it, it, as I say, it's going to stand out apart from anything else. The I don't think it is in sympathetic to the host dwelling in the way that it should be. But, you know, I, I'm delighted we have had some changes here. I don't think there's any public benefit to this. And I've, I've really found this very difficult, this private benefit. I can see plenty of private benefit. But, you know, we like discrete entrances. We don't like filling. We have had some pretty poor decisions in uh, the area, but we, you know, we do like separation and we don't like, um, as I say, anything sort of showy. The whole point of it is that we have laurel hedges, lots of trees, and the houses just sit, you know, behind them. When you drive down, Great Austin's is a main road. It's not a, you know, a sort of country lane by any stretch, but it is always a very attractive road. So I still feel that given that we really want to preserve the conservation area, I still feel that rear extension and indeed the size and scale, even though it's ancillary of the outbuilding is not, uh, does not actually enhance the, the conservation area. So I'm afraid I still have very strong reservations about parts of this application. Thank you very much. Councillor Neil and Councillor Deer. Councillor Neil. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> okay, so in terms of the conservation area, um, it, it seems to me that this proposed building fits in pretty well with what is already there. It, um, the buildings are generally of that size, the new, the size that it would become, or, um, you know, this wouldn't be getting bigger than a lot of the neighboring properties as far as I can see. Um, it does seem to me that the building has been well designed and will look um, okay from the, the main road. Um, it seems to be designed so that it fits in with the existing building. So I don't have a problem with that. Um, and clearly the uh, upgrade of the building is um, well deserved. Um, the current occupants would obviously appreciate it and it would be suitable for people in the future. Um, when I look at the building today, I see there's a, a rather tatty looking conservatory, if the owner doesn't mind me saying that, on the left hand side, um, that is going to go, which will be a, a positive. Um, that's something that most stands out at the moment as a negative on the site as far as I can see. Um, as far as the uh, the separate dwelling or building in the in the garden. It is quite large, I agree, but it is there for a purpose. Um, I imagine it's either going to be used as a, a work from home office or um, an occasional use by someone else for occupancy. It doesn't look as if it's been built uh, as a separate dwelling. Um, so I can understand why the current owners would want to have such a construction there. So I don't have a problem with that either. Um, Size-wise, well, I think it's mainly in up to them. It's quite a big garden. It can accommodate it. Uh, that outbuilding plus the main building that is extending is still quite well separated from the building to its right-hand side, as far as I can see. Um, so overall, I support the officer's recommendation to go ahead on this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Deer, then Councillor Hess. Councillor Deer. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, this is a large plot, isn't it? There's lots of space around it in, in uh, houses of a similar character. Um, I think the proposals will enhance the front elevation, um, and they are in keeping with the existing building. Councillor uh, Rabini mentioned earlier um, the, the discordant nature of the previous application. Well, I think when you're doing something as large as this in relation to what's there, you do need to respect the um, existing appearance, and I think this does. On the rear elevation, 
to my mind, looks very substantially better. Um, and there's clearly going to be a, 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 an enormous investment in the, this bit of housing stock. And then the idea of changing the windows to timber from UPVC is, is, is going to substantially enhance the nature of the, of the, of the, the environment of the, of the conservation area. I've no doubt about that. Um, it sounded from what Councillor Coburn said, like Farnham's declared, made a unilateral declaration of independence or something. You know, we don't do grand, uh, apparently. Um, but we don't do grand is not a planning argument, really. It's rather an expression of a personal prejudice, um, as is the idea that uh, this area has a management plan. Well, I, I wasn't aware we were living in communist China, that all sorts of any, any uh, application had to have the approval of the, com of the Politburo to, in order to take place. So I reject all that sort of stuff. Mm. I think we are, uh, we are on, we're on solid ground here in accepting the uh, planning officer's recommendation. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I think we're getting rather emotional there, actually. You, Councillor uh, Hess. I think, I think you're getting rather emotional there. Yeah, okay. Of course, well, yes. Councillor Hess and Councillor Martin. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I'm, not a, I'm not aware of being under the control of the Politburo. Um, but for um, Councillor Deer's information, it, it's just simply the Conservation Area Management Plan. Um, of which there are a number. In fact, there are six in Farnham. Um, so coming to this proposal before us, um, I took a drive around this afternoon on the way here, actually. It's a good sized plot. Um, and I'm, I'm very pleased that the applicants taken advice from the Great Austin's Conservation Group, um, which is a help. The um, Proposed front elevation, for me personally, works very well. The fenestration is in keeping with the existing. And actually, I think the extension uh, balances out the house and makes it look really the way it should. There are, there are substantial, perhaps not grand houses, quite grand um, in Great Austin's, but um, there are substantial houses in Great Austin's. And when you look at this in the context of others, at the moment, as it currently stands, it looks a little bit underwhelming. And I think the extension um, balances it up. There is space. Um, it's not crowding to the neighbor because the neighbor actually is set back even from the boundary by a driveway. Um, so the front elevation works for me. Um, not too concerned about the home office. Personally, that doesn't really bother me. It's low level and useful if you're working from home, uh, a, a great additional asset to have. The, the rear elevation is slightly more of a... And I'd also like to say that it's, it's very pleasing that the applicant has made an effort to emphasise there will be a change of UPVC windows to traditional timber. That's a really good positive. It's just the rear elevation balconies that concern me because of the overlooking issue. And I think that is probably in the whole scheme, the one issue that troubles me because I don't, when you've got a garden and you've got a property of this size, I do wonder whether you actually need to be standing out on a balcony and whether you actually ever would, um, but there's no screening provided by the um, what looked like glass balustrading um, for, for the overlooking uh, um, neighbors. So that's really the main uh, bugbear that I've got. Um, unless somebody can assure me that there won't be overlooking issues or that the uh, balconies could be perhaps uh, sacrificed, um, that would reassure me a lot. And I'd be then inclined to vote in favour, but at the moment that's actually causing me a big hesitation about um, approving this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The officers, I think, want to come back on that. Yes, Dan? Yeah, thank you, Chair, and um, just to respond to Councillor Hess's comments there, um, there is a screen. Um, it is shown on page 49 um, of the agenda under the proposed elevations, the bottom left um, and there is a condition, condition four, um, that imposes that, that it should be retained in the form 
um, and design and materials of the privacy screening shall be agreed prior to the first use of the roof terrace and evidence of its erection must be submitted to the local authority. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I was going to ask the same question. Why we have an obscure glass to 1.8 metres on that side? Is it for overlooking or stopping uh, people looking out? Why is it there? Are we overlooking something at 1.8 metres? Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, yes, it is to restrict overlooking so that any views would be restricted to the rear of the garden and not into any neighbouring amenity space. So that actually, that amenity, uh, that space actually looks over somebody else's amenity, does it, over their garden? Well, that, that is the purpose of the, of the, the glazing, is to restrict any views to the rear, rear garden. Side. Yeah, so it's not looking across to the side, but restricting. So if it didn't have the glass, you would be able to look into someone's garden? Yeah, that's right. But, okay, thank you. And that's the purpose of condition for okay. as well. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Keane. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, I do find it very refreshing that somebody has come to the committee um, having taken all the advice from the officers and um, also um, the, the building's officers. Um, but I know that I feel that the out the outbuilding is much larger than it could be. Um, but on the other hand, you know, um, this house is going to be enhanced. There's no doubt about it because um, replacing the UVPC back to timber um, and taking the time to make sure that it's right. So I am impressed with that. What I'm not so impressed with um, is the balcony, um, because I do feel that, um, yes, it can be um, obscure glass now, but in time it may not be, and then it would be overlooking gardens. And for that reason, I am still very concerned. If the balcony wasn't there, I would be more than happy with this. I, I still think it's quite a, a lot, large lot of extensions, but um, to me, um, that balcony does cause me great concern as it does to other councillors. And if the balcony wasn't there, I would be more minded to, to be accepting of this. Thank you. Legal visitors wish to come back, yes? Um, thank you, thank you, Chair. The, um, in terms of the wording of condition four, so the balcony is obviously part of the, is part of the proposal, but, um, but in terms of the screen, it, it, condition four does require it to be retained in that, in that form. So, um, so the, if it were to be removed at a later date, that would be something that an enforcement, that would be an enforcement issue rather than, um, yeah, the, the condition does secure it is ultimately the, the, the situation in terms of the, in terms of the screen. Thank you, Jeff. And we have to deal with the application as before, of course. If it was a pain point. Any, any other councillors wish to speak? No. Oh, right. Then we move to the recommendation. That subject to conditions one to nine and informants one to three, permission be granted. Those in favour, please raise their hand. Thank you, Chairman. That's eight in favour, one against, and one abstention. Therefore, it's carried. Thank you very much. Let's move on. Next application is WA 2022-0256. The land rear of Pennies, 88B West Street, Farnham. The erection of a three-bedroom dwelling. And uh, when it gets interesting, and you're going to be leaving us now, aren't you, Dan? Right. Please. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Chairman, and good evening, members. Uh, this is an application for the erection of a three-bedroom dwelling, uh, land at Pennies, 88B West Street, Farnham. Uh, you can see here the location plan. The site is outlined. Everybody see the slide now? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so this is the location plan um, site outlined in red um, and the remainder of the site in blue. So the existing dwelling uh, at Pennies can be seen at the north side. Um, the site has a elongated access leading onto West Street at the south side. Uh, this is an aerial photograph um, showing the site. You can see the blue dot um, indicates the site um, and then West Street at the bottom of shot. Some photographs of the site now. Uh, this is the access from West Street. Um, there is a dropped curb and a gate. You can see there in the center shot. Um, this is within the site, uh, looking toward the existing dwelling uh, on the north side, some existing hard standing, uh, prominent yew tree on the right hand side of shot. And some other photos within the site. Um, this is looking um, in a sort of southeasterly direction uh, with the yew tree on the boundary in the center shot and the garden um, of the existing dwelling in the foreground. And that is the, uh, the sighting there. Um, is where the new dwelling would be sited. Uh, another shot um, of the existing garden area showing the boundary wall on the easterly side um, and there's an existing outbuilding uh, there on the right hand side. Uh, and this shot focusing on the yew tree and the existing uh, outbuilding with the boundary wall in the background. This is looking toward the westerly boundary. Um, the boundary wall is listed and the, the building beyond uh, is in commercial use. And this is the access track uh, flanked on either side by lime trees. Uh, you can see the gateway uh, to West Street in the distance and immediately rear of this shot is the parking area you could see on previous shots. Uh, this is the proposed uh, site plan, um, the dwelling in the centre. Um, you can see how the site would be rearranged. Uh, there's some uh, hard standing for parking. Um, and you can see the trees um, on the left um, and the bottom. Proposed elevations now. Um, the top elevation there is the easterly elevation, um, as though you were stood in the garden. The bottom elevation is the southerly, um, so that is what you'd get walking up the access driveway. Um, the top one on this slide is the westerly elevation, um, effectively the rear of the dwelling, um, and the bottom one um, would be the northerly elevation. Um, here we have some floor plans, uh, the proposed ground floor plan on the left and the proposed first floor on the right. And then this is a 3D mock-up um, of how the dwelling would appear um, within the site, uh, not 100% accurate, obviously it's a computer generated model. So the key issues with this application, um, first of all, we have had an additional representation received, um, objecting uh, heritage and tree grounds, um, and also on the grounds of noise impacts and neighboring amenity. Um, so the main issues, uh, the character of the area and the impact the proposal would have on that character, the impact to the nearby heritage assets. So we have some listed buildings fronting West Street, um, and it's all within the, uh, the town centre, final town centre conservation area. Um, the impact of neighbouring amenity, um, the access uh, track and the trees that both flank the access track and the prominent yew tree um, on the easterly boundary. And just to remind members that we, the lack of a five-year housing land supply means that the tilt of balance applies. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, James. Uh, I have two public speakers on this item. The first being Gerard Gent. Step forward, please. And you have four minutes when you start speaking. Okay, Gerard. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good evening. I'm Jared Gent of 88 West Street. This planned development sits within the Farnham Conservation Area, close to 88A 
88 and 89 West Street. All of these properties are grade two star listed. As members will be aware, paragraph 200 of the NPPF makes clear that any harm to or loss of the significance of a designated heritage asset requires clear and convincing justification. Here we summarize as set out more fully in our representations, the material harm to the significance of 88 West Street in its setting and the character of the conservation area. No NPPF justification for this harm has been provided as part of the application and consequently members are not in our view able to approve it as it stands. Officers have considered the issue and concluded the proposal would lead to no harm to the significance of the heritage assets due to, first, the already subdivided nature of the site, next, there already being backland development in the area, and lastly, the prevalence of burgage plots in Farnham. Challenging these in turn, subdivision. The development of 88B did result in a historic subdivision of the original curtilage of 88 West Street. However, 88B sits to the rear of its plot, and so this subdivision does little to reduce the sense of space and openness, nor does it increase the perception of development. In contrast, the new dwelling would sit little more than four meters from our boundary. Absence of a sense of development, of space and of openness are all characteristics which contribute to the setting of this grade two star building and all were present when it was originally listed in 1950. Secondly, back land development. As highlighted in our representations, 88 West Street forms part of a collection of properties that have a distinct character within Farnham. Unlike other immediate sites and large parts of Farnham, views to the rear, the north, are uncharacteristically verdant and sylvan with a distinct lack of development. The area acts as a green lung in the center of Farnham. The current proposal would adversely harm this intrinsic green character and the significance of the conservation area through a further subdivision of land, a discernible increase in the perception of development and a threat to the large and important yew tree on the plot. As noted in our representations and supported by professional arborist advice, the canopy spread of this ancient tree across the plot is materially understated in the application. In fact, it seems that there is hardly room on the plot for both tree and new dwelling. Risks of drastic pruning or incidental damage to the tree's branches quite apart from its roots, because of this conflict are referred to in the application, but not addressed. Finally, burgage plots. The site and immediate area has never formed a burgage plot. There have never been any workshops or agricultural structures to be repurposed. This area is distinctly different in character and has never been anything other than field or garden. It is therefore strongly contended that the proposal would lead to, lead to less than substantial harm, but harm nonetheless. There follows an NPPF requirement to balance this harm against the public benefits of the proposal. As set out in our representations, the public benefit of a single dwelling is nominal and does not outweigh the clear adverse impacts to the significance of three grade, star, two, grade two star listed properties and the conservation area which our submission itemizes. We therefore request that members overturn officer's recommendation to approve this harmful application. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Well, the next one, I presume is online, is Andrew Tompkins, is that right? Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chairman, councillors and officers. Um, the proposed house would fit neatly between the existing houses of West Street and Penny's and the new subdivided plots are still larger than many of the plots in the surrounding area, so the site will appear spacious and open. A town centre house is considered to be the most sustainable form of development, as it is an economical use of existing infrastructure and a remedy for urban sprawl. The house has been designed to appear as a converted outbuilding, such as a barn um, and the outbuildings next door, um, which would originally have belonged to the main houses on West Street. Its scale and appearance has been carefully designed to fit in with the surrounding outbuildings behind West Street. The windows have been also been carefully positioned on the elevations to ensure that the proposal does not overlook any of the immediate neighbours. The house would be well screened by high walls and trees. The tree consultant and the council's own tree officer are content with the proposal's care 
for the trees there. There is plenty of parking proposed for both houses, removing any requirement for parking in the town centre's car parks or streets. The applicants have lived in Farnham for over 50 years and they wish to retire in the town centre. By accepting the planning officer's recommendation for approval and supporting this application, councillors will be promoting a sensitively designed lifetime home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, councillors, do we just get this one off? Ah, councillor. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Uh, well, this application has um, created a storm of objections, um, about 30, in fact, um, and for good reason, because it uh, proposes to infill an important green area um, to the rear of a grade two star listed building, very much crowding it. But before I go on, um, I'd just like to point out to colleagues um, that Farnham Town Council's comments are not in our printed pack. Colleagues might have gone online and found uh, the uh, Council's uh, comments about this, but I just, in case you haven't caught up with that, as it's not in the pack, I'll just read you what um, the uh, planning consultative group at Farnham uh, agreed about this application. The application does not enhance and protect the conservation area, not compliant with the Farnham design statement, Farnham neighborhood plan policy FNP1, new development and conservation, FNP2, Farnham Town Council conservation area and its setting, and LPP1 policy TD1. The proposed development will be harmful to the amenity of the surrounding dwellings, mainly listed buildings, including the garden wall to the west and detrimental to the impressive limes and the large yew tree on the boundary. So uh, in the um, list of um, uh, consultees on the uh, website, um, there was one from a firm called AG Planning Development and another from RMT Tree Consultancy who have both flagged concern over the proximity of the development to the mature yew tree marked as T3. And it's over by the boundary, but nevertheless could well be impacted by development. There are also other mature trees nearby. And in fact, actually, if you look from West Street, although there are close bordered timber gates, you can actually see some very mature oak trees so the real concern here is an, another case of infilling an important green open space. And I'm very concerned that it will seriously crowd in um, number 88 West Street being in very close proximity and also affect their amenity and outlook to the rear. Um, so for those reasons, I won't be supporting this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Corburn. Thank you, Chairman. I apologise to Councillor Deer in advance for using words that he doesn't like, um, but I'll carry on using them. <laughs> uh, no, I have um, difficulty with this one, but really I have a question. I mean, this is our third application tonight, all of which have had something to do with conservation areas, heritage, right? Now, I can understand they come in because they are the controversial ones and the unbalanced ones, which is fine. I understand all of that. Um, but we have lots of listed buildings, some of them, you know, differently listed, and we have a, an assortment. We have, um, Councillor Hare said, six um, conservation areas. We haven't got a management plan for all six, have we? Um, but certainly, I think there's now three of them with a management plan in, in Farnham. And, and obviously, Waverley is going through. These are Waverley documents that um, councillors approved. They're not something I've just made up and thrown in to be awkward. Um, what I really want to know is, what is the point? You know, could we have some sort of um, updated guidance on what we can and can't do? Because I read the MPPF and I read our heritage policies, and yet somehow when we come to the crunch, 
they don't seem to be particularly powerful. And if we are going to list these buildings, and if we are going to appraise our conservation areas and then put in a management plan, you know, how, how are we going to take that forward if we just lay it aside when something comes in, which is, you know, okay, but doesn't quite fit the bill. Um, you know, what is the point of all this listing and all this appraisal and all this management plan? So it's really a sort of vague question because here we have again, an application and we're looking at really quite highly listed buildings as, as listed buildings go. Uh, and yet the recommendation is, is to grant, you know, to sort of, um, it, it is acceptable, even though there's harm and I'm really getting I, I, I'm genuinely, I'm not just being awkward tonight, I am, as, as I can be at times, um, I just am gen, genuinely confused as to why we go to all this trouble to protect our heritage and then seem to lay it aside a little bit too lightly when we have a, a planning application. So uh, if you can't answer me now, that, that's not a problem, officers, please, you know, at some point, I'd love some further guidance on um, conservation areas and heritage. Well, I won't go into your number, but I think the chairman to speak on that in return. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, the, the policy context um, for heritage assets is, is very strong if harm is identified. Um, and in this case, we haven't identified any harm. Um, it is open to the committee if they identify harm. You would then have to weigh that harm against the public benefits of the scheme. Um, you, you may or may not identify public benefits of the scheme. Um, but but that harm carries significant weight if identified. No, that's very interesting because I don't understand the public benefit of some of the stuff. So if we could include that in our guidance at some point, you know, I can understand certain public benefit and others just completely passes me by. I can understand the benefit to the applicant, but not a public benefit. So um, any help you can give me on that would greatly receive. Thank you. I think you'd be able to do all actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Councillor uh, Neil and then Councillor Keane. Uh. Thank you. Um, I'm in two minds on this one. Uh, as far as the design of the building is concerned, I am quite supportive. It seems to be quite a, a, a nice piece of architecture and what have you. Um, but I am concerned about the impact of the building in the area that um, has been well described already um, and the impact on the surrounding listed buildings and the overall impact on the conservation area and the loss of um, some green space in the town centre. Uh, the town centre needs green space and green lungs or whatever. Um, and this is um, an important contribution at the moment, that garden area that exists and it's going to lose some of that here. So um, in general, I think I probably won't want to support this for those latter reasons. Thank you. Right. Now, Councillor Dixon, you arrived just as it started, so I'll like to speak anyway, sir. And, uh, ap apologies, Chairman. There was a, a massive accident on the A3, so I actually sat about 10 minutes from here for about 20 minutes, which made me exceedingly late even though I had said I was going to be a little bit late, which I apologize to everyone else. Um, yes, I think, I know it's not strictly speaking planning matters, but let me just tell you a story. Outside my house on Farnham, I had a beautiful flowering cherry, and many of you will know that what happened a few years ago is it died. And uh, Surrey came along and said, you've got a dead cherry tree outside your house, and they cut it down. I now have a wonderful stump outside my house, and um, so, and there doesn't seem to be very much we can do about that. Now, when I'm looking at this thing here, we don't have, and we never do have in these cases, we don't have a plan of where the internet is going to go in or where the water is going to go in or where the gas is going to go in. And none of those are planning matters. But what I can see here is a very narrow driveway. And the, I'm assuming that all the deliveries are going to go up and down that. And even if they don't put all the deliveries up and down there, there's going to be a skip. I mean, my cherry tree was hit by a skip. That's what killed it. And um, there's going to be a skip going there. There's going to be deliveries of tiles and concrete, and then they've got to put utilities in. Basically, all these trees are going to die. 
And I don't see it, just looking at this, you can just see it. So I think therefore what my colleague Councillor Hess said about the tree experts who've commented on this. And I think just looking at the diagram of where these ancient trees are, it would um, it is our duty to protect these um, old trees. So I think in my case, I can't support it. Thank you. Right. With apologies, Councillor Keane, I'm sorry to continue on. It's all right, Chairman, thank you. Um, just going back to, um, you know, the listed building issue. I mean, Councillor Coburn is very right. It is quite mystifying when we get these applications in and, you know, we, we're told that they're listed buildings, but it's all right to put add-ons here and there. Um, and I'm sure that the people sitting in the gallery listening to this, these conversations are as confused as we are at times. I'm not saying that all listed buildings um, shouldn't have extensions or, or whatever, but I think we need more guidance on, on what is right and what is not and the damage and, and so on. Um, as to this particular building, um, the building itself, I think it's quite nice actually. Um, it, it's a really, you know, a very modern building, but um, the loss of the green lung is something that does worry me. Um, in Hazemere mm -hmm. over the years, and I've sat on the town council on and off for many years, we have always been extremely protective of the green lungs in our town um, for the very reason that, you know, it, it, we don't want to lose that um, sort of the areas that we have. So we've always been protective. And I can understand the issue here that they want to protect the green lung. As to the trees and the narrow track, I feel sure that there possibly will be damage to the roots of those trees because heavy vehicles constantly going up and down is bound to cause some kind of damage because of soil erosion. And I don't doubt that our tree officer has been very careful and diligent in what he's saying, but with that track, the width it is, I do feel sure that we are going to lose some of those trees. So they're the two issues that I have, um, you know, in my mind to worry about. Um, but uh, I would like to know more about, you know, I, I think guidance for all of us would be very, very helpful. And that's no disrespect to the officers. Thank you very much. I just made, I, I was made for each application I would judge on its own merits. But anyway, James, you want to come back on this one? And then I'll come to Councillor Deer. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just starting with the trees, um, condition 12 um, relates to tree protection measures, uh, which have been agreed by the tree and landscape officer at the council. Um, and if he had concerns, he, he would have raised them. Um, we, we had a few variations on this uh, protective scheme and he did raise some concerns and got amendments to that scheme. So we have ended up with um, a protective scheme that the tree officer is happy with. Um, and, and just again, picking up on the, on the heritage point, um, the, the heritage um, policies and the presumption towards um, the preservation of heritage assets effectively kicks in if harm is identified. Now, on these applications, we as officers haven't identified harm. On this application, uh, we haven't identified harm. Now, if harm is identified, that's when you have to weigh the harm against any public benefit. So that's where the public benefits test comes in. Um, and with that test, the presumption is very much in favour of the preservation of the heritage assets. There is no, there is no presumption towards um, granting a development with that test. The public benefits have to clearly outweigh the, the heritage harm that has been identified. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it seems to me this side of West Street's full of places called yards and gates and gardens, and that's part of the actual charm of the place. That's part of the, uh, the attractiveness of the area, to my mind. And as far as the you know, open spaces and things, I mean, you know, the, the Green Park and St. James's Park are called the lungs of London in town, <clears throat> lungs of town in London, because they're open to the public. As far as I'm aware, this is someone's back his private garden which is not a public space or would be available to any member of the public should they wish to inhale there um 
the, the building itself seems to me extremely nicely designed, extremely uh, appropriate. Um, and the, 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 the matters of neighboring amenity tree and conservation area grounds all seem to have been addressed by our officers. I mean, the assessment of listed building matters is really a very highly specialized thing. And it's not something I really pr pr pretend to understand. Uh, it's a subject that people dedicate their whole lives to. And we have people here who've done that and I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to accept what they say. So I don't have a problem with this, thank you. Councillor Martin and Councillor James. Um, like Councillor Coburn and Councillor Keane, I have to question what the public benefit is on this application when the heritage assets and the conservation area is going to be affected by it. So I'm, I will not be voting for this application. Thank you. James. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, it's very interesting that you get the public benefit in one thing and then a green private garden that isn't open to the public. So you, one can't have it both ways. Uh, I, I will be supporting the application. I think it's a beautifully designed, modest small house in the centre of Farnham. And years ago, um, when you could, everything you had to build on every garden, you know, people would say, I'm afraid you need to put six in there, not just one. Um, and I assume, I don't know what the age of uh, pennies is, but I imagine it's certainly younger than the listed buildings in the front, and it must have been constructed using that track that they're going to construct the second house with. So if it didn't affect, those trees are still there when they built pennies. Um, I don't believe um, some years later that um, they'll be using small construction vehicles, little light, it won't be have great big diggers and stuff. It'll be things that are appropriate, like all the little ones in Cornwall, you go down a, sort of three foot wide thing to build something at the back or convert something. Um, so uh, I think it is a beautifully designed, uh, modest house in the center when you've only got to look at the um, uh, proposed block plan that's here on page 70. And it's um, probably the only largish house in the middle of that area and everything else is very small around it. So um, I think one house in that bit is um, very, um, commendable and not six. Thank you very much, Chairman. So I will be supporting you. Councillor, I'll let you come back into the board, Councillor. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, thank God we're not trying to cram six on because they would be um, rabbit hutches. But look, <clears throat> let's come back to the Farnham neighbourhood plan, which is a made plan. It's approved. It's part of planning consideration. Policy FNP1, and that, this is for the benefit of those of you, my colleagues, who might be thinking of supporting this application, just to uh, hear what policy FNP1 and 2 actually say, because these are um, documents uh, which are part of planning consideration. New development in accordance with neighbourhood plan will be permitted, and I'm taking one extract from a whole lot here where it protects and enhances heritage assets and their setting. Now, that's not complex. And then policy FNP2, new development within the Farnham Town Centre conservation area, as defined on map B and its setting, will be permitted where it protects open spaces and views important to the character and setting of the area. Now that's not complex or difficult to understand. And quite frankly, putting a house on this green open space, which is quite enclosed and in the vicinity of a number of highly listed buildings is completely inappropriate. Thank you, Chair. Gosh, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, any other council wish to speak? No. Ooh, right, we have to move to the recommendation then. And the recommendation, there's two parts to this. Recommendation A is that subject to the applicant entering into an appropriate legal agreement to secure SANG, SAM contributions within six months of the resolution to grant and subject to conditions 1 to 13 and in accordance 1 to 4 permission be granted. And the recommendation B of that part is that in the event that the requirements of recommendation are not met, permission be refused. Those in favour, please raise their hands. 
those against. Abstain. Uh, right, okay. Well, it's obviously that's not carried. So we need an alternative recommendation, please. Oh, and, 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 yes. Anyone wish to come forward? Obviously, to refuse. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Who, wants, who wants to move? Uh, anyway, you will, Councillor Keane. Anybody willing to second that? Councillor Rubini, right, uh, we have reasons. Do, do we have any sort of... We, 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 here's one we obviously made earlier. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chair. We've got some draft reasons um, on heritage and character grounds and tree grounds um, that covers what the committee is minded to uh, conclude. And, and loss of the green lung. We could probably roll that into the heritage, perhaps. Um, so on heritage uh, and character, we've got the proposed dwelling would encroach into the relatively open setting of the nearby listed buildings at numbers 88 to 90 West Street, uh, which would be reduced by the additional built form. This would lead to less than substantial harm, both to the setting of the listed buildings and that of the wider conservation area. No public benefits sufficient to outweigh this harm are identified. The proposed development would therefore be contrary to policies FNP1 and FNP2 of the Farnham Neighbourhood Plan 2020, policy HA1 of the Local Plan Part 1 2018, and the provisions of the NPPF. Um, now I can um, add in a sentence on the green space to that reason. Thank you, Chair. There was a mention of, um, of trees as well, when, um, but... Um, it, I think really, I think the committee do need to come to a view on whether that forms um, part of the reason for refusal. We've got a, um, a condition from the tree officer, which suggests that um, that, that could be adequately resolved via condition. So, um, I mean, I think we need to steer from the committee as to whether that is, a re is part of the reason or whether it is just the reason that uh, James has just read out. Thank you, Jeff. you raise your hand, Councillor Coburn, I can just see a pen, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> the hand holding the pen. Um, you know, I was just wondering, did I actually hear the word setting of the concept of the buildings? Because, did you mention that? Sorry, I, I missed that because I think that incorporates the green space and the trees, really, because that's all part of the setting, isn't it? Of the listed building. Um, you know, yeah, I was looking at um, condition 12, and as some mentioned, I think of matting and, and protection on the ground to protect the roots. Um, what what other damage can be is like if the skip goes through, it can the corners of the skip are very tough metal, and they can rip the trees, and then um, in fact that's what's happened to my tree, the skip uh, bounced into the tree, I ripped a big hole in it, and then the tree died because the infection went in there. So the tree uh, needs to be protected all the way up. Um, and I don't know whether we can get small tractors as they have in Cornwall, but um, that would be a good thing to have as well. If, if but none of that's specified in what we've got here. Uh, and if you look at the plan, we, we don't know that the other house is built using this track because have they not got access on the other side? Um, okay, uh, do you want to come back on that, Chris? I'll go, James. Um, thank you. Yeah, in terms of the like physical damage to trees during construction, the the, the normal route of dealing with that would be through protective fencing um, conditions. Um, so um, that would form part of that um, submission under that condition. Normal in normal in most instances. Um, so the yeah we officers consider that would normally be be dealt with through through condition. Thank you. We're talking about reasons for refusal here, aren't we? So, yeah. um, Yes, but our, it's whether it's whether this is added as a reason for refusal or not. Our view as officers is that it can be conditioned in terms of construction process based on the tree officer's comments. Thank you. Good, uh, thank you, Chair. Are you making reference to um, FMP1 and FMP2 yes. Yes. within that? Yes. I didn't quite hear. Thank you. Are we going for that? 
Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, it, I've, I've got what I previously read out. I will add a reference to green space. Um, so it would say the proposed dwelling would encroach into the relatively open setting of the nearby listed buildings. Now, at that point, I could add a reference to encroaching into green space um, at num numbers 88 to 90 West Street, uh, which would be reduced. So that's a reference to the setting being reduced by the additional built form. Um, this would lead to less than substantial harm both the setting of the list of buildings and that of the wider conservation area. No public benefits sufficient to outweigh this harm are identified. The proposed development would therefore be contrary to policies FNP1 and FNP2 of the Farnham Neighbourhood Plan 2020, policy HA1 of the Local Plan Part 1 2018, and the provisions of the NPPF. Can we vote on that? Yes, I think we vote on that. Those in favour of refusing for those reasons, please raise their hand. Against. Abstain. Kimberley, please read it. Thank you, Chairman. So that is eight in favour, two against, and one abstention. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, that is obviously refused for those reasons. Thank you very much. We come near the end. Um, right, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, can I ask? Please stay in.
Thank you, Chair. Yes, this application, um, we'll start with the, the planning application, uh, reference 1400, um, relates to the Bishop's Table Hotel on West Street in Farnham. Um, and it proposes the change of use of the hotel uh, to dwelling houses uh, with associated works. Uh, this slide shows the location plan, uh, the site outlined red, and they have worked in the proposal into that. Um, we'll come to a larger uh, version of that drawing in a moment. Uh, West Street now lies to the north. Um, aerial photograph, uh, the hotel is indicated by the blue dot. Um, and the, the curtilage at the rear to the south, um, West Street to the north. This uh, is a photograph of the facade uh, of the hotel. And a shot from the rear, uh, the access on the right hand side, you could see that on the left hand side of the facade shot previously. Uh, another shot of the rear. Uh, we're just proceeding now in an um, anti-clockwise direction. So that is a rear uh, photograph looking toward the northwest. Um, now uh, looking sort of southwest, uh, two trees on the boundary on the right hand side um, and the existing uh, access in the foreground. Uh, this is from the rear. Um, so the hotel uh, in the distance there in the center shot um, on the left hand side, there is uh, what is now accommodation for the hotel in a separate building and the proposed uh, development would turn that into a separate house. Um, and again, working our way around in an anti-clockwise direction, uh, you've got the, the building on the right, which would be converted into a house uh, under the current proposal. Uh, on the left hand side are two uh, existing uh, individual dwellings. Looking directly to the rear um, and the existing dwellings, there's four existing dwellings at the rear of the site there um, shown on this photograph. That shows some of the existing parking spaces, um, those on the left hand side relate to the hotel and those on the right hand side relate to the existing dwellings. Um, they are demarcated by the portable sign on the left hand side. And so this is the proposed site plan. Um, the application would involve a small rear extension to the hotel, which is indicated by the red hashed area at the rear of, of the, the building. Um, and you can see there how the parking spaces would be um, arranged um, and the access track, which would be rerouted um, around block two. Um, it currently goes underneath block two, as was shown in the photographs. Some elevations, um, the front elevation, um, very little change. Um, the side elevation there, uh, which is the west side elevation, again, very little change. Uh, we seem to have missed uh, an elevation there. No. I'll just proceed, maybe it's... Uh, got lost. So this is a floor plan, um, the ground floor uh, showing the red dashed line shows the existing extent and the element beyond is the uh, proposed extension area. Uh, the ground floor would be converted into two uh, flats. And the first floor, uh, again, two flats would be formed on the first floor. Um, and this is uh, the second floor shown on the right hand side, uh, one flat on the second floor. Um, and there is a basement level. I don't believe there are any changes to the basement level. Uh, this is uh, block two, which is currently um, rooms for the hotel and, and incorporates the archway you will have seen in the photographs. Um, this would be converted to a single uh, detached dwelling. And block three, um, again, currently rooms for the hotel, um, would be converted into a single detached unit. Um, the key issues here, um, the, the primary issue is viability. Um, so the, the policy tests, um, FNP 23 of the Farnham and Neighbourhood Plan, um, considers that um, any loss of a hotel, um, they have to prove it's unviable. Um, 
So the applicant has submitted uh, both viability and marketing reports provided by Savills. Um, these reports detail that the hotel um, has been operating at a loss um, and has been operating at a loss um, since 2018, at least until the date of the publication of the report, which was 2021. Um, they also detail that the hotel was unsuccessfully marketed. Um, officers have had regard to these reports, um, and on balance, officers consider the policy tests both within Farnham Neighbourhood Plan Policy, FNP 23, and LT2 from the Local Plan 2002 um, to be met. Uh, just to provide a little further background, um, officers did look to have the Savills reports independently reviewed. Um, unfortunately, the cost of this was not agreed with the applicant. Um, officers have therefore taken a view to proceed uh, with the information we have and to um, come to a recommendation based on what we have. Um, and it is open to members um, to weigh the reports accordingly um, and come to their own conclusion on the viability. Um, other, other issues uh, relevant here, um, the hotel is listed. Um, and the extension at the rear, as well as alterations, uh, would impact the listed building. Um, and there's also access, uh, parking. Um, again, the lack of five-year housing land supply um, means the tilted balance applies. Um, and just finally, two additional representations have recently been received uh, subsequent to the publication of the officer's report, uh, raising similar points to those previously raised and covered in the report. Thank you, Chair. Right. right, we have one more right. uh, series online. Is that right? Check in one. Right, it's uh, Ken Dykesman, I believe, is the name is. Uh, Ken, you have four yep. minutes. That's correct. Thank you. Um, yes, I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to you. I know that viability is the, the key issue here. Um, and you've got the report and your officers have supported it. But I wanted to give you the perspective of the owner here because he's owned this hotel since 2007. He's spent almost a million pounds on it and increased the number of bedrooms from 15 to 24. And he's tried his level best. And the problem is it has three key issues that prevent this building from being successful. It's too small, number one. The building is a listed building and it is limited in what you can do with it. This building can neither compete as a budget hotel, it can't compete with premier inns and that sort of thing and be cheap and cheerful, but nor can it be a top end luxury sort of destination wedding venue sort of hotel. It just hasn't got the outside space. It doesn't have the kind of character you need to compete at the top end of the market, which means it's sort of stuck in the middle at 24 rooms at neither end of the market. The second point is that it used to be quite a successful business hotel, commercial travelers and businessmen visiting the area. This market has changed quite dramatically. A lot of business conferencing now takes, on, takes place online and the hotelier has found that this side of the business has pretty much collapsed. And so he's trying to compete as I said before, with budget at one end, which you can't do, and luxury at the other, which he hasn't got the offer to provide. And it's a listed building, so you're limited in what you can do with it. He spent almost a million pounds on it, trying to upgrade it in 2017. On top of these things, the number of hotel rooms within sort of 10 miles of the site have increased enormously since 2012. 411 additional hotel rooms provided within 10 miles since 2012. So you can imagine in this marketplace, a 24 bed hotel with 10 parking spaces. And you can see from the, the photographs there that there's not much scope to provide many more um, without eating into the little op open space that exists out there. Um, with such a limited number of spaces, it's impossible to compete. So. For these reasons, as I say, I just wanted to put that to you so you understand from his perspective, he really has tried his best. The, the alternative of a residential use is, he's concluded that the most straightforward one 
is to swap the 24 bedrooms and 10 spaces for seven dwellings, seven flats effectively, with 13 spaces. I don't believe there are any heritage arguments against this conversion. Um, the heritage arguments are there to prevent the hotel really becoming uh, more viable in essence. So, um, yeah, I mean, thank you for letting me explain all that and hopefully you'll understand why this application has been submitted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, councillors, who would you speak? And it's Councillor Dixon. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I think uh, the thing that um, that's upset me the most about this is that um, there doesn't appear to be any affordable housing. Now, the uh, owner or the speaker on behalf of the owner has explained to us that there's 13 parking spaces. So they've come up with seven flats, which is a good idea because then pretty much every flat's got two parking spaces. But it is in a town centre location. And looking at all these flats, they've all got um, three bedrooms. So, um, which makes them quite big. And I, I don't know who they're going to be aimed at because they've got not got any gardens, so they don't really suit a family. And yet they've got three bedrooms, which is far too big for, well, probably too big for a retired couple. So I think this sort of, and yet they've got a town centre location. I would have thought, so I'd, so I would prefer, I think, if the, this hadn't come up with this configuration. Um, that's, um, but I, that's what all I have to say. Thank you. But we have judge candidates in the application before us. So appreciate. It. Right, Councillor Coburn. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, no, I, I mean, I, I regret, like everybody else, the loss of a hotel. But I know the history of this hotel. We actually gave it permission um, to do some enabling development behind to pay for some of the improvements to, uh, some time back to try and, you know, to make it viable, but it, it's always struggled. Um, we, we packed it out when my daughter got married and the only other people I know who stayed there are the QCs who are now KCs coming in to do planning um, uh, inquiries and helping us out with neighborhood plan examinations. It's always struggled. Um, it's so constrained as the speaker said, because of the, um, the, the listing is lovely and I would love to see it uh, converted into nice flats. I, I really think it's a, a good use for that property. I mean, a building is only useful, isn't it, if it serves a, a purpose as well as looking good. So as long as um, the heritage officers are you know, convinced that we can do the conversion and keep this building looking lovely, and um, I, we have to take the, the word on the viability, but anybody who's lived in Farnham for any length of time or visited it will know the struggle that the, this hotel has always had, very sadly. Um, and, and I think uh, the speaker's right. When we were trying desperately to save it with the en enabling development, that we hadn't got the, pre um, is it Premier Inn we've got now? Premier Inn hadn't been built. Uh, they hadn't done the aviator. I mean, it's just, completely changed in terms of bed spaces in the area. So, um, you know, I, I regret the loss of the hotel, but if it isn't viable, I think this is a very good use of the space. Thank you. Mr. Hess, then Councillor Deer, then Councillor Keane. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> well, it is very regretful that um, there's a pro proposal here to change it from um, hotel use. <clears throat> there, there are boutique hotels in all sorts of towns up and down the country that seem to survive, although obviously with the uh, energy crisis afoot, um, that might change um, the uh, picture quite considerably in the future. But there, there are, I, I can think of a few, um, the George in Rye, the Bull in Bridport, and in fact, the George in Hazelmere, um, which I think ha that had some development behind uh, not so long ago. Um, I agree with what Councillor Coburn has said that it has struggled. Um, it is strange why it struggled, really, um, given that it's a town centre location. And in the town centre itself, if you disregard the Premier Inn, which is down by the recycling centre, um, we've only got the Bush Hotel. And for a town the size of Farnham, I, 
I would have thought it could have carried two hotels, but you know, I've got to be aware of what the gentleman was saying about one of the um, market sectors having died away. Um, it is a changing world we're living in. Um, so I'm sorry if I'm waffling, it's just really that it's with great regret that we're going to lose a hotel that I would have hoped could have been a really great boutique hotel. It's a beautiful building, it's in a great location. Um, I think it's been um, under, underutilized. I don't think it's had the creativity and the flair to make it work, but that's all probably history now. Um, one thing I just flag up, actually, just for general interest, is that if you look at the floor plans, a lot of the bedrooms are on West Street. And um, if you've uh, ever had a property on West Street, um, or any, any busy street for that matter, you wouldn't want to have a bedroom actually facing onto um, that kind of road uh, with windows open in the summertime. So if they're going to have uh, a ducted air ventilation system, I hope they won't be puncturing the front elevation of a very fine building um, with vents um, to get the air in or out. Um, but a lot of those bedrooms are on the front elevation, on the street elevation. Um, so that's just a, a by the by comment, not a planning consideration I grant. Um, so I'll just leave it there. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, dear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think it's a shame that the uh, sort of uh, a verifying uh, viability study wasn't carried out. Uh, I assume the applicant thought he paid for one and that was probably enough. But um, the uh, speaker we had earlier gave us a, you know, a very comprehensive, uh, very convincing, should I say, uh, rationale behind the, this, this, this project. <clears throat> I, mean, I, think he said he, I think he mentioned 411 extra rooms in the area. Well, I think that'll probably do. Um, we have something in Hazelmere, the Georgian, uh, where we retain some uh, hotel element, but th that is a, that's a huge operation that involves uh, a bar and a restaurant. The employee, you know, it's big enough to employ 110 people there. So, um, you know, you can't really compare that, I don't think, with what we have here. Uh, and what we are getting here is seven dwellings without the need to construct anything material sent. We are getting seven residential units without the need to build uh, that uh, I'm sure would appeal to, to many, many members of this committee. Thank you. And Gaza Keane. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, uh, yes, as Councillor Deer said, we went through the painful process in Hazelmere and, you know, the, um, the, uh, Owners tried hard to keep the hotel going. There was a fight to keep it going and it didn't work. And it simply didn't work because there wasn't the market forces there to keep this hotel going. And obviously this has happened to this hotel. And it is, it's really sad to see a hotelier struggling to keep a business going. And at the end of the day, it's just not going to work. But I think it's better to see good quality dwellings there instead of a hotel falling apart and becoming an eyesore so i am very much behind this um this this application thank you councillor rubini thank you chair following on from councillor dixon's comment which i was going to bring up myself could i ask the officers please to remind us how many units built you would need affordable for thank you um, Thank you, Chair, and thank you, uh, Councillor Rubini. Actually, that was a question we did want to come, come back on. Um, we've got policy AHM1, and we've also got guidance in the MPPF. So the threshold where affordable housing would start to be provided in this location would be for 10 uh, units or more. So actually, uh, whilst I note the, you know, the, you know, the, it might be desirable to provide some more affordable on this, on this site, there isn't actually a policy uh, requirement for it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chris. Um, I can accept that now. I just want to reinforce that we were some way off being able to provide affordable. Thank you. Councillor Neil. Thank you. Um, I've listened carefully to the argument put forward um, by the person, Ken, there on the video, um, making quite a strong case that it's not viable. Uh, I don't really want to see the hotel go. I think the 
town does deserve um, and should be able to support more hotel space going forward. Um, of course, we have to take notice of expert opinion there, but I look also at the, the Bush Hotel. The Bush Hotel is viable. It attracts people, a lot of them coming without cars um, and often only staying for a night or two. So it does seem there are there is potential for a boutique type hotel in the town centre. Um, so I'm not really convinced on the, the, those arguments because I, it all comes down to marketing at the end of the day. Some people manage to make these places successful, some don't. Um, so there we are. Uh, I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to vote yet, but um, that's what I think. Thank you. Any other candidates? Oh, yeah. All right, candidate. You have the word, candidate. I'll let you come back. Thank you, Chair. Very kind of you. Uh, just a very simple question to uh, James. Um, if the committee were minded to approve this, is this, because uh, I've looked through the pack and I didn't see it unless I've overlooked it, is this project subject to CIL? Thank you. James? Okay. In theory, it's subject to the civil regulations because it forms dwelling houses, but I believe they could offset against the existing floor space. Um, and given that they're only providing a very limited extension at the rear, I believe the still payable would be relatively minor in the context of the scheme as a whole. Thank you, Chair. Right, we can move to the recommendation then, I think. The recommendation is in two parts. The recommendation A is that subject to the applicant entering into an appropriate legal agreement to secure SANG, so SAM contributions in six months of the, of the resolution to grant and subject to conditions 1 to 13 and in points 1 to 3, permission be granted. And recommendation B is that in the event that the requirements of recommendation are not met, permission be refused. Those in favor, please raise their hand. Those against? And is there anybody abstaining? Okay, that the result, please. Thank you, Chairman. That's nine in favour, two against, and one abstention, therefore it's carried. Right, we move on to what is that's for the technicality, really, in the sense that the last applicant, which is related to this uh, um particular application that Liz, Lizzie Billing and said for the erection of re extension and internal and external alteration to facilitate the conversion of the hotel to flats. Do you have a slide here, James, or not? I do. Yes, Chairman, we do. So yes, this is the, the second part, which is the list of building consents um, in relation to the works of the hotel building only. Um, so this relates to the rear extension and the internal and external alterations um, to facilitate the, the conversion to flats. Um, so it, the drawings are all the same. Uh, the extension is hashed red. Um, and uh, here are the, the rear um, or the rear and the side elevations that I wasn't able to show uh, before. Um, so on the rear elevation, which is the one at the top there, um, the extension is the flat roofed elements um, with the uh, vertical lines um, just part way on the left hand side and you can see it again on the side elevation which is the easterly elevation the extension is the vertical lined um, element and the only issue here is the impact of the list of building thank you very much chair does anybody wish to speak on this item or shall we move no i will move right side of the recommendation then that subject, subject, subject to conditions one to five and informative consent be granted. Please raise your hand. Staying. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. That's, that's nine in favour, one, uh, one against and one abstention. Right. Now, before we leave, I have one announcement to make. Um, as you all know, and you've received copies of an agenda for next Wednesday to deal with three applications as a drama part. 
It's been drawn to my attention that, so in fact, uh, the, the certain enumeration of what want to hear all three applications at the same time for obvious reasons. Uh, it's been drawn to my attention that Tilford Parish Council have not had the opportunity to comment on certain technical aspects of relating to one application. Is that correct? Uh, thank you, Chair. The, um, they, yeah, they, they had a bit of difficulty in terms of a meeting that wasn't um, wasn't held, um, was my understanding. Thank you, Chair. Well, they're now proposing to meet on the 26th of September for the planning committee and the full count, I think, is the 6th of October. Therefore, rather than waste the committee's time, I've decided that it's probably best so that we have all the jigsaw, all the pieces of the jigsaw together, that we defer this, well, postpone the 21st of September and hear that on the 12th of October. Which will mean, of course, that we'll have to have a second sitting on the 19th of October to hear the application we would have heard on the 12th of October. Did you follow? And uh, anyway, that's the end of the announcement. Good night, safe journey.